application. And uh, so panel proposed that uh, we should uh, have this local weak cosmic censorship so that uh, a criterion singularity is always hidden behind a breakout horizon. So in some sense, we cannot have the super extrema breakout with next singularity. And, and uh, so can we, uh, so in some sense, can we prove that this, this uh, uh, conjecture is true or not? Okay. So, so the source and the one, one uh, around 1970, he proposed something, the Duncan experiment. So naively, he will say that if I want to study this kind of problem, I will introduce a particle and then schedule this break hole. And, and to see if this break hole, this uh, particle will go into the break hole, is the particle at uh, the break hole, they come together, violate uh, the, this uh, extrema, extrema, extremality condition. But naively, this is a very difficult problem because uh, if you have the record as a particle, usually you will have this so-called set force. When, when the particle moves around the record, they will get the back reaction and change their trajectory due to the curvature. So, so dynamically, it's not easy a problem. Even until today, people still have very hard time to take the set force up to the second order. So, so we are not so sure if uh, we can dynamical study this problem and prove the cosmic, cosmic, cosmic censorship. However, they a smart way, we just, uh, they a smart way by just uh, consider the energy budget. So basically, if we have some, instead of considering dynamical problem, we consider, we treat it as a kinematic problem. So we require, we will not buy the M greater than Q from some point of view of the energy conservation. So, so for example, it's not so difficult to see that uh, if I have a particle with charge and the mass, then the energy associated with this charged particle would be something like this. And uh, this always, because uh, this is uh, a time like kidney vector, and uh, then you can, because M is positive, so it's always greater than E times uh, potential and horizon. And potential and horizon is equal to one for the extrema and break hole. So for uh, extrema break hole, it's not so difficult to see that uh, by this simple argument, you find that if your particle will not go into the, even your particle go into the, uh, the break hole because the mass is always greater than charge associated with this particle. So it's impossible to overcharge the, the break hole and the cosmic censorship will not be violated. And then uh, comes a uh, woman's argument around uh, 20, 20 years ago. And uh, she argued that uh, actually it's possible to overcharge a near extrema break hole. Uh, instead of extrema break hole, it's a near extrema break hole. So in this case, you can 
promised by the deviation from humanity by this small uh, number. And uh, then, we, in this case, the uh, chemical potential on the horizon is not only equal to one, it's deviated from one by this small quantity. And, the, and the, also, the energy condition required this condition. Then, if we assume we are start with the near extreme breakout, then we, we find that the, the total energy budget will get up like this. So, this quantity can be smaller than zero if we require and the charge of the particle is greater than fusion m divided by 2. And then it seems that we can overcharge and the cosmic censorship is violated. But actually, actually this, this, this is not right because uh, in some sense, if we require this condition, then they the E square, they E and the from here. And uh, so I already using the second order perturbation. But on the other hand, I only assume first order and about the potential. So in some sense, you, you miss some uh, second order trends. This is why you have a violation. So we need to have more detailed study and a more careful study about the second order energy conservation law in order to uh, check if this cosmic censorship is correct or not. So, so, this, uh, where this, so in the, yeah, uh, so in the uh, 2017, Source and Hua, after Hua formulated this, Hua uh, first studied this uh, problem around 70. So after <coughs> almost 40 years later, then he formulated, with his student, he formulated a complete proof to say that we actually will not violate the cosmic censorship, at least for Einstein, Maxwell gravity. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and uh, so what they did is simply just uh, you, be, you should be careful when you consider this Chitanga experiment by throwing the matter into the black hole, you need to take it up to the second order variation of your energy conservation in order to see, check if this is true or not. Okay. So, so motivated by this, I, I will first review the proof and then motivated by this, we just try to check if their statement is very general or not. So we check the three-dimensional gravity with a VTB, VTB black hole. So in this case, um, we try to generate the gravity to more uh, generic sense, so we also included torsion and the chirality. And uh, if this is true, then we know that by ADS-CFT correspondence, throwing the matter to the black hole, in some sense, we are throwing the coolant to, in the dual CFT, you are, you are in some sense putting the coolant to your system, trying to cool down your system. And, and uh, so, if the cosmic censorship can be violated, then due to from our ADS CFD duality, this means that third law thermodynamic will be violated because the Chima breakout will have a zero temperature. So once I can go beyond the, uh, the Chima breakout and get a super Chima means my temperature will be negative. So it's impossible. So so now every, uh, even this uh, is something is uh, in a trivial case, but if we can do it and uh, follow the procedure and check if this is true. Then through ADS CFD correspondence, it's implied that the third law thermodynamic, at least in this case, is, a, is a true in the DOS CFD. And it is an operational uh, check of the third law thermodynamic because, uh, in some sense, in the, deal, in the gravity picture, we are doing some matter. And this matter is cooled down the, temp the black hole temperature. In some sense, we are throwing the matter and try to cool down the, the, the system in the CFD side. So it's the operational. Uh, Proof. Okay, so this is why we, we try to uh, consider this case, and uh, and so so this this is the first thing we have done, and the second thing in recent we are try, we see in the progress is that if we try to promote the weak cosmic censorship to a principle, and so if we have some higher electric gravity, and uh, usually we have some wave and coefficient we cannot control, and. Uh, it, because we don't have a quantum theory. So, so do we have some way to control this coefficient? One thinking is that uh, we, if we require the new gravity will not violate the cosmic censorship, then we probably can put all the, some, co some control to the coefficient. Or the other way around, maybe turns out that after everything is clear, maybe all the high gravity are obeyed with cosmic censorship. So for the moment, it's not so clear. And this, uh, this, in this case, uh, we consider this higher high generalization. Quartic 
stretching to Einstein and Maxwell gravity. So we have all the nine coefficients, each time are dependent to each other. And uh, up to the fourth order perturbation, this is a metric, GR. And then, then you see that some of them, for example, this C1, you turn out R squared, this will not change your metric, but you turn out other coefficients, some of them will change the metric. And, the, and the, from this metric, you can read out the extreme operator condition. So the, this condition uh, changes to this, then the correction, and this correction is uh, associated with all the coefficients, some of the coefficients in, in, in this plan. Modified. Okay, and uh, from this, if uh, uh, we call free censorship is true, then we require this condition should be called all the time. Okay, so we need to check uh, if, if we consider the trim up record, then we can check the linear perturbation around this record and uh, see if this condition is called or not. Yeah, so and if this pattern, then the condition must, must get some content. So, this is one way to see that actually we call free censorship. And using it some way to constrain your low energy gravity. And also, because uh, they the uh, consistent framework by source and word prove that we cosmic censorship, so we can implement consistently to the higher degree gravity in this way. So I will quickly uh, review the source and word method. And then, this content to power, we need to uh, introduce the linear perturbation and, linear, and the second order perturbation to define the current for energy which basically associated with the flux going through the black hole. And then we can use in, uh, this kind of uh, identity or inequality to perform the Jipanka experiment to destroy, uh, try to destroy the curly uh, black hole. And then we apply this procedure to the uh, three-dimensional topological gravity. And, and then we check that in, in the case we check, they all satisfy the cosmic censorship. And then we conclude. So, so as I said, basically the Schwartz measure is uh, based on the energy conservation. So basically we need to just uh, define the energy in the uh, gravity. And we know that it's associated with uh, some kind of the ADM mass. And, and uh, why I put it in a more uh, systematic way to do this, they just introduce, uh, if you do the variation of your Lagrange, then one time in proportional to the equation of motion, and the other, the boundary term, which is, uh, can be used to define the symplectic structure. And then, if we have this uh, symplectic potential, we can define the symplectic current in this way. And uh, if you don't know what it is, you just consider the, the free the particle with the potential. Then in some sense, this uh, C type like a P delta X, if you do the variation. And then this uh, omega, this uh, symplectic current, is something in the symplectic structure with delta P, which delta X. And also, associated with a, a vector field, we can define the current. And this current is simply defined, associated with this uh, C part. And, uh, and uh, you also contract the, subtract the contraction of the uh, branch to this vector field. And, and uh, then it's very easy to show that uh, this uh, current actually is, uh, is uh, close, it, exact, it, exact, uh, it's close. Uh, up to, uh, it's close up to the equation motion. And then we can just uh, uh, put it into the exact form up to the equation motion. So C to C proportional to equation motion. So once equation motion, once we are go to unsure, then this current is uh, exact current. And, and then we can do the variation of this current and then we find this kind of uh, identity. So, so by this, we can define a Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian associated with this vector field will be just as the integration over the Cauchy, uh, some hypersurface associated with this uh, symplectic curve. And uh, using this uh, identity, then in some sense, uh, we get this kind of form. So we can, in terms of the Hamiltonian, we can express the Hamiltonian in terms of the variation of your, of your concept charge. Q is the concept charge, to some extent, and also uh, some term associated with the uh, symmetric potential. And plus some, very, some term, but term, this is on the boundary already because they the total derivative. And this term is on the, on the path, but it's proportional to variation of the equation of motion. And, uh, and you don't quite get that, you can understand this relation is something like this in the particle case. Then if this C is a leading vector field, then allow C phi equals zero. And uh, because this is a bilinear potential, 
bilinear curve, so if uh, L is equal to zero, then this can be equal to zero. And then from here, we have this kind of identity. And uh, as we're going to see, this will, be the, uh, linear, this will give you the linear perturbation of the energy conservation. Okay, so, so for example, uh, if you evaluate this quantity uh, at infinity, actually you will get the ADM mass and the ADM angular momentum. The variation of angular mass and the variation of angular momentum. Omega H is the angular velocity on the horizon. <laughs> and so this is the first order linear perturbation. And then we can go to the second order variation. And in this case, we need to define the canonical energy. So it, naively, if we go to the second order, it means that if we expand the, uh, for example, Einstein equation to second order, then we, in some sense, introduce the gravitational wave. Then you have gravitational wave, or, or you have mass wave, then you have the EM wave going to the black hole. So this canonical energy can be understand data we may see that this canonical, how the canonical energy will be understood as the flux going to the black hole. And the power then will be understood as the change of the area of the black hole. And so we can just uh, vary the first order identity and then we get the uh, second order identity associated with uh, canonical energy. Okay. And then we, we can define the second order uh, ADM mass. So we can turn, in this case, uh, we, we will get a second order uh, type of uh, variation identity. So for example, in the einstein maxwell case, uh, you can get explicit form for the, this symbolic uh, potential and the chart. And also this, uh, we see that this proportional to the equation of motion and, the, and the, its variation. So, so, and then by plugging in this uh, in the einstein maxwell we get something like this. We have a fourth order variation identity, and we have a second order variation identity. So these are exact statements for the energy budget when you try to throw the something into the black hole. So we can use this to get an idea of the, uh, of the, uh, of the cosmic censorship. And uh, if we consider high order gravity, for example, something will change. So for example, if you take the C4 turn, C4 is R times F squared. Then you see that you have new turn. Uh, appear for your charge and uh, so on and so on. So we will expect that um, the sum of the term may be just screw up your condition. Uh, so this this uh, energy conservation may, may not be compatible with the uh, extrema, uh, extrema energy condition. So, but we are still check there are some sort of technical issues. So we haven't the country without it. So now we go, go to see how we can check the weak cosmic censorship based on the energy, uh, identity, energy conservation law. So basically, we need to introduce a Cauchy surface. So this is a very strange Cauchy surface. So we basically have a horizon path. And then, so this is a horizon, a line like horizon. And then you have a space like a Cauchy surface at daytime. So we assume that uh, all our matter are flow into the black hole near in a very in a finite time interval. Then we particularly choose the uh, initial point. At this point, we require there no uh, nothing change there. And by this condition, then we actually can say the, the area and the charge associated with horizon have no variation at first order. Then our first order identity becomes something like this. So we have this term. And then remember, we have also other terms coming from C. We have other time coming from from here. Okay, so this time we give you the the charge change and the horizon. So if we have this turn, and then then we, we, we find out the energy condition become energy conservation will become something like this. So this is a stress tensor you threw into the black hole and the issue obey the energy condition. So if we assume this obey the energy condition, we get the inequality. So the right hand, the head, left hand side should be should be positive. <coughs> so if for for the extrema black hole case, we can just plug in the extrema black hole. So if this extrema black hole m squared, this r plus basically it should be equal to m. So the condition will be this equal to zero. Then uh, we we find that uh, if we set r equal to m, then <coughs> this this condition will become this condition. Okay. And uh, you can easy to check that this condition actually is coming is the same as uh, 
you introduce a, a one parameter variation of your extreme outbreak of congregation, and then if you do the variation, you, you, you find that this variation should be, should, should, should be always part. This, you get the variation in this way, and uh, this is, using this condition, you find that even after the variation, you, you are always obey the, the, the sub-extremality sub condition. So in this case, we know that, okay, we, we have, in some sense, we, can, we cannot destroy the extreme outbreak of, at, at least in the and Maxwell context. So if we go to the second, if go to the extreme case, things will be more complicated because now we have the uh, uh, bifurcation horizon. So so we have the uh, endpoint and B here. And then again, we are introduce the same hybrid surface. So we, we, are, we also require the meter to fall in, into the break of the finite inter time interval. And then require the, at this place, at this uh, horizon, at the beginning, nothing, not, no, no, nothing change. We don't have meter, we don't have something going to, so we don't need a barrier at the very beginning. <coughs> so it, then we, 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 and also we assume that the first order variation is done optimally. So optimally, we, 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 at the first order, we, we have this kind of equality condition. And uh, by choosing this kind of coaching survey, as I said before, we can spend off this uh, uh, charge and, uh, and the entropy variation on the horizon. And however, we have, we have a second order uh, flux variation uh, at horizon coming from the C term, delta squared C term. And then in this case, if turns out the second order inequality would be, in some sense, the left hand side would be greater than, than the canonical energy because it will shift that this second order variation of straight tensor also obey the energy condition. So the only thing we need to check is we need to calculate this. Uh, this uh, uh, canonical energy. So th there are two parts of the canonical energy. One part is uh, along the horizon edge. And then after some calculation, you can find that this actually associated with the incoming flux of gravitation wave and the electromagnetic wave. So, so this always should be positive. These are just kinetic energy associated with these two flux. And then so the remaining thing is to evaluate this uh, canonical energy on the daytime hypersurface sigma one. Okay, and, and uh, it's not straightforward, we cannot do this, so we need to rely on some assumption. So these are the assumptions proposed by source and what? The shim that uh, the, the solution is stable. So in the late time, the, any perturbation will just approach to another current human record perturbation. So we, we will not see something different. We, we, we have a no hair theory, so in some sense, you guarantee after the day time, you still can only have curved human breakout on the background, and then we have some perturbation associated with that. So with these things, then we know that um, originally we are trying to calculate uh, this uh, current energy, but because at the day time, this, this, this change, the first order variation of the field, is just the same as the first order change of the field around the curved human breakout. So in some sense, we can replace this, this. And then we know that if this is just a perturbation around a curling one break hole, they no flux on the horizon. So in some sense, we can replace this guy by this guy and uh, assume all the variation on the horizon equal to zero. And then <coughs> this when we do just to the entropy change or area change of your, uh, the same as this that the same as uh, the entropy T E S at second order. So if we have this, then we can calculate uh, this that. Uh, Second order area change around the curly black hole. By doing the expansion, you, you, you get this uh, complicated case. In this case, I turn off the angular momentum. I only have the charge. If you have angular momentum, then you have three line and more. Okay. So it's a very complicated case. And then you, at this uh, near horizon geometry, you get the uh, surface gravity with this form. And and you plug in this in and combine everything together. And also using the first order variation to be done optimally, then miraculously everything will be just become this simple, simple stuff. Okay. So this will become the, your second order variation, and then you can check the weak cosmic censorship by the do this function. It means that I need to do the perturbation of my uh, extreme energy condition up to the second order, and then if you do this. You, you find that uh, 
you will find that this, uh, after some calculation, you find that up to the second order this is the answer. And, and it's not so sure it is, uh, this is right or not. So we need to, uh, so, so when we do this, actually, we already using the second order variation. And uh, we also using the fact that uh, the, this is what done optimally. So after combine all this, you find that uh, you get a complete square. So it's very uh, interesting because uh, originally everything is quite, look quite complicated, but if done everything right, in the end of the day, after the second order, you get a complete square. So this means that uh, the cosmic censorship condition all, all the time. So, so it's also remarkable. So we can consider a particular case. This particular case is like a, I drop a charged particle from infinity to a curved black hole. Because it's a charged particle, so there is no spin. And, uh, and uh, we are falling into a curved black hole, so there is no charge, so no chemical potential. And uh, we drop this particle along the symmetric axis. So the second order change of it from angular momentum would be equal to zero. Then your energy con conservation of a second order is very simple. It simply just look like this. And uh, you get this answer. And actually, you can separate this into two pieces. One piece is coming from work done by the self force. Because you drop the particle, you will have the work done by the self force. Also, the particle itself has self energy. So, so you combine these two terms together, so you, you find that actually you get the same answer as you derived from the second order variation identity. So dynamically, in this simple case, we actually find that this uh, match quite well. Okay. So I just finished the, the review of the, of the source and bond. So basically, I will very quickly go through our calculation. So we study a three-dimensional gravity model. So we have the Einstein term and the cosmological constant term. Also, we have chain Simon term and also we turn on the torsion. Uh, and the equation of motion is uh, look like this, okay. And then T and I is something in the torsion and the, the curvature, uh, the curvature tensor you have. So it's a combination of the parameter, okay. So since change, yeah. And uh, we only consider three limits. So one limit is simply just the Einstein gravity. We just set the theta L and theta D. We turn on, turn on the torsion and we turn on the chirality. And also we consider kind of gravity case. Here we turn off the torsion and then tack to the critical point. So we, we have get a kind of gravity. However, you switch the order, you find that then even you go to the chirality point, you cannot get on the torsion, get, get rid of the torsion. So, so all three limits uh, combine together. And then in this model, actually we, we get the VTE black hole. But now the cosmological constant is changed to the combination of the torsion and the, this uh, ADS radius or ADS curvature. And then the horizon have this condition. So we, from here, we read that the extrema black hole condition should be look like this. Okay, you, you depend on effective uh, cosmological constant. Then we can just follow Y and to go through the check. And, uh, and uh, in, we find that the first order identity look like this. So the, this is not the original mass, this is the combination of mass and, and the torsion and the effective uh, cosmological constant and so in the angular momentum, you know, we get the entropy. So, so even it looks like the first law, but all the quantity will be fine in this sense. And, and then we can just uh, uh, find that this uh, first order variation identity actually proportional to this kind of term. Okay, so it's uh, the right, right hand side is a little bit complicated. So if we consider extreme R case, then we find that this look like this. So actually, in terms of original mass and angular momentum, is, uh, the, we have a condition like this, but uh, it's, quite, it's already the condition for the extreme R black hole. But we have some quantity like this. And then we require this quantity to be obey the energy condition. But there is some of it here. If we have the torsion, besides the energy momentum, we have also a spin angular momentum. And then we can impose the straight tensor, the party condition for straight tensor, but we are not so sure can we impose the party condition for the spin angular momentum tensor. This guy only happened in the first order gravity. So in this case, there is the sum of it. So, so 
So even it looks like the I can simply assume that this also, if this is positive and this is positive, then in some sense I can say, okay, all cosmic censorship for the Chuma breakout is also okay. But uh, if we have torsion, then things are hard to say. Yeah. At least for Einstein, kind of gravity, we don't buy the cosmic censorship. For torsion gravity, then it seems to become complicated. <laughs> and uh, for kind of gravity, things are very uh, interesting because almost we cosmic censorship is trivial because um, we, we find that, that for chiral gravity, this, the mass, the angular momentum, entropy of where this kind of condition. But when we try to consider linear extrema variable, we always require the first order variation is done optimally. This means that the, we, done, we do it, the first order perturbation but keep the entropy equal to a constant. We don't change the horizon of the black hole. Then it's in, immediately implied that this condition is true. So, so if this is true, then the cost, the we cost me center should hold trivial. So in some sense, if I, I change, I change the parameter, I move along a straight line. So, so it will not cross the the three mark condition. Yeah. And then we can go to the second order. So if we go to the second order, then uh, we we find that uh, in this case. Uh, they no flux because they not propagate integrated in three dimensional gravity. So we don't need to worry about this. Uh, and uh, so we simply just take uh, the canonical energy around the daytime surface, which are just equal to pH times delta squared as of entropy. Then we will do this every do this, this so it's so complicated. And, uh, but after we uh, using the optima force order variation identity. And then we find that we can just complete the square of this uh, uh, cosmic censorship condition. Yeah, I'm going to finish. So, so in some sense, uh, if we take in into a kind of second order, then you change. If originally, you don't. You didn't take the full second order. You just uh, like you take the, the tangent line. Then you would cross this uh, extrema condition. But if we take the second order correctly. Then we complete a square, then you simply just follow this straight line. So, so this why we, we, and we don't have to see anything change. So now I can prove my talk. So basically, we review the source and what on the problem of weak cosmic cosmic censorship. And as I say, this uh, proof is based on the energy budget. So as long as you can consider the energy conservation uh, to completely, then you can have the definite answer for your question. So, and then we extend to the three dimensional TMG, and we find that the weak cosmic censorship there is true for Einstein and Kylo gravity. So, so we are relying on pride that the third law of thermodynamics is true. And then we have ongoing progress to see how this uh, weak cosmic censorship can come to the gravity. Thanks. Thank you for the wonderful talk. Uh, questions or comments? In the 3D gravity case, uh, what if the cosmology constant is a positive? Uh, it, it, it we consider ADS, so it's negative. Uh, nice. yeah, oh, but oh, it's, oh. A, it's a rescaled by the torsion. Yeah, so it's different from the torsion. If you have torsion, then it's different from original cosmological constant. Uh, other questions or comments? Uh, even though, let's thank this speaker again.